Hello, I'm Janáš Rivinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them and tell you all you need to know. According to the Defense Ministry in Minsk, the Belarusian military is holding exercises in areas near the country's borders with Poland, Ukraine and Lithuania. The drills were run for three days. Now, a week ago, Alexander Lukashenko, the Potato Prince of Belarus, also known as the Beetroot Baron, paid a visit to a military unit located near the Belarusian-Lithuanian border. At the installation, he inspected a tank battalion and assessed the troops' combat readiness. Notably, he was accompanied by a vicious white hound that struck fear in the hearts of men. Okay, it was a fluffy little Pomeranian. A kind of equivalent of the rabbit of Kerbenog, Probably not. Anyway, during the visit he mentioned the incidents and illegal crossings the border area has been seeing and declared that, and I quote, any provocation must be stopped by armed force, end of quote. In case any of you forgot, let's do a quick recap of the last time that the clown ruling Belarus tried to play Napoleon. Но я тебе публично скажу, любая провокация должна пресекаться вооруженным путем. Нечего с ними шутить. Нарушили государственную границу к уничтожению. Так точно. Церемониться ни с кем не будем. Никто не должен ни с кем церемониться, и мы так и будем поступать, потому что если мы будем жевать сопли, знаешь, что будет. Так точно. Поэтому любое нарушение государственной границы на уничтожение. Они понимают только силу. See, now they are a bit embarrassed by the dog and are trying to show it, but it is there. Now it's time for a quote from Mr. Lukashenko. I will say publicly, there is no reason to fall around. If they violate the state border, they must be killed. No one should hesitate. And that is what we will do. These are the words of the Minsk dictator. And basically, Lukashenko capped off his declaration by saying that border violators understand only the language of force. And he's been striving to make these crazy visions a reality. It's no wonder that social media has been calling him the Potato King. There is little space for empathy in his potato head, given how crammed it is with visions of unchecked power. Iron-fisted rule and hammer and sickle iconography. And that's not the end of threats emanating from Minsk, by the way. Recently, our proud Pomeranian dog owner also delivered this gem, and I quote, we are preparing for war. I speak frankly about it. If you want peace, prepare for war," said Alexander Lukashenko, humbly adding that he didn't invent the famous threes. But preening in his uniform, the dictator did not stop at threatening Poland and Lithuania. Minsk's propaganda outlets recently published an alleged documentary called Clean Up, which features footage of what Belarus claims are operatives of Ukrainian security services, some of them Belarusian nationals, attempting to smuggle explosives across the border for the purpose of detonating them in key locations of the country. Of course, after the explosions in Moscow, nonsense like this can gain a lot of traction with a properly primed audience. And the dictator may then announce a purge fierce enough to make Stalin himself blush, and the public will most likely lap it up. The reality, though, probably more bark than bite. And I'm not talking about the little fluffy dog this time. No Steven Zigal, though. I'm disappointed. Anyway, explosions and terror are high on the list of preferred topics for the Kremlin's propaganda outlets right now. We've already seen the Belarusian documentary. Time now for a similar gem produced by Minsk's Big Brothers from Russia. 
The FSB has now published footage showing the alleged shutdown of a smuggling operation designed to bring in explosives into Russia from Ukraine. Yeah. In the effort, the Russians allegedly seize RDX, a potent explosive capable of taking down a five-story building. If any one of you still had your doubts, time to let them go. The Kremlin is not interested in looking for the actual movers and perpetrators behind the attack in Moscow. All they want to do is persuade the world that Ukraine is responsible. <laughs> Sneaky. Although, to be fair, I do prefer the Belarusian film, it's more action heavy, you know. So, how many theories about the March 22nd terrorist attack in Moscow have we heard by now? Well, why not do a quick recap? Some Russian outlets reported that Tajikistan nationals were allegedly involved in the attack, and even named the supposed attackers, and posted their photos online. Other reports said that the car carrying the alleged attackers was detained in Russia's Bryansk region, not far from the border with Belarus and Ukraine. Out of the six passengers, however, four managed to escape. And yes, we all saw the footage and pictures from the Moscow court, which showed the alleged attackers beaten to within an inch of their lives, some even struggling to stay conscious throughout the hearing. However, Tajikistan's foreign affairs ministry responded to the allegations unequivocally calling them fake news and de declaring that Moscow has not reached out to Dushanbe with any official reports or accusations for that matter. On the 23rd of March, the narrative shifted when the Russian state news agency TASS, citing the public relations center of the FSB, reported that, and I quote, persons who participated in the terrorist attack in Crocus City Hall tried to escape to Ukraine. End of quote. This new framing suggested the attackers planned to cross the Russian-Ukrainian border and had contacts in Ukraine. The terrorist attack itself, according to the FSB, was carefully planned. The former president of the Russian Federation, Dmitry Medvedev, alongside a number of Russian propagandists, also hinted at Ukraine's alleged involvement. Meanwhile, the plot thickened when the Freedom of Russia Legion uploaded a statement to its Telegram channel in which the organization blamed Putin's regime for the attack and brought up the 1999 terrorist attacks in Moscow as an example of how the Kremlin uses incidents like these to seize and consolidate power. The Legion also declared that they would fight against Putin's security forces. Well, time has come to unveil the latest theory about the March 22nd attack, and the Russian propagandists have been spinning these narratives wildly, but this one, this one is something to behold, it really is. Это исполнители, ну эти ублюдки, они да, они им отключили сознание. Там, скорее всего, в комплексе действуют психотропные вещества, нейропсихологическое это самое программирование. Программирование и, возможно, еще Это тоже показывает экспертиза. Может быть, и чипы вставлены, потому что сейчас нейробиология позволяет управлять человеком. Вот эксперименты Илона Маска, когда он из свиней делает людей, делает людей. Это уже... А тут наоборот да, получилось. Да, да. А, а тут, значит, комплекс такой сделан. Ясно, что это уже не какая-то вот просто группа псевдо-ИГИЛа, а это хорошо организованная... Террористические акты организованы на уровне западных спецслужб. Только вот. у них есть такие средства воздействия на людей. Понятно. Yep, you heard that right. They are saying that Elon Musk's neural control microchips were inserted into the attackers' brains. Well, makes a lot more sense than the previous theories, right? And what's even more sad is that this latest bit of nonsense was put forward by a Russian general, Vladimir. Olchinsky. Weren't general officers supposed to be, like, reasonable folks? But no, they would rather go with mind control. 
In other news, The Matrix came out 25 years ago, so plenty of possible inspiration there. Did any of the attackers say at some point, I know Kung Fu, all of a sudden? Follow this particular white rabbit, not of Kerbenog, for more propaganda absurdity. Okay, so we remember how Joseph Stalin invented removing people from your friends list before social media were even invented. But this here story is something similar, in reverse. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, in collaboration with the Ministry of Justice and other specialized agencies, is, and I quote, providing support, end of quote, for the removal of the Taliban from the Kremlin's own terrorist organizations list. And previously, the special representative of Russia to Afghanistan, Zamir Kabulov, informed Russia's TASS agency that a high number of invitations to the five-day Russia Islamic World Forum scheduled for the 14th of May have been sent out to a large number of Taliban officials. It's important to remember that the Taliban was recognized by Russia as a terrorist organization in 2003. Russia has been negotiating the designation before. In 2020, Kabulov said that the delisting could happen after a similar decision from the United Nations. As is typical for the Russians, rather than taking a moral stand, they are just changing their minds about other countries to suit their political needs. Well, that's nothing new. And unless the Taliban accidentally deletes the friend request, they and Russia are set to become BFFs once more. For as long as common interests are there, otherwise it's mute and block and report for extremist content. Typical. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.